From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, how are you today? I'm glad that uh, we have an opportunity to chat, and we have some some uh, interesting discussion topics on tap for us. Yeah, I'm doing great, as always, and it's always nice connect, uh, connecting and talking. I like it when we have guests, and I also like it when we just you and I uh, spitballing ideas out. Absolutely. It's a, a lot of times we don't don't even know where we're going to be heading, uh, but but we have a good starting point. So um, if you didn't catch our last episode, um, it was 134. And we, we were fortunate to have uh, Chris Backus, who's the director of integrated Techno technologies group at Harman, uh, who owns AMX. And um, he was able to give us a little bit of a uh, uh, review in time of AMX and and most importantly, um, discuss their new Muse platform that was recently announced. And, and um, James, you and I got a few really interesting thought points from that discussion, and we thought maybe we would uh, elaborate on them a bit. So um, you know, one of the things that, that I saw um, and, and that, that you talked about in the last episode is, you know what, this is interesting. We have three or more uh, languages that you could choose from, and you can not only write in the one that works best for you, but the one, but also have different people write in different ones and marry them. I mean, it sounds really modern and it almost sounds like a, a programmer's dream if you think about it. Um, and, and, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about like, what, what is the future of AV programming? And it sounds like this might be, uh, a sign of that. Um, I, I'll, I'll let you kind of talk a little bit about what that means to you and why um, why this is something that's important. Why I think this is important, and I agree with you, I thought this was really um, refresher and I want to say future-ish, um, being able to run different scripting languages and have them work together. Because one, like we say, is you could have a member on your team who uh is very good in python and another member who's very good in javascript um but if you go a product and be like okay well now we need to come with a language that everyone's using someone's coming into an area they're not strong in this allows everyone to use what they're strong in um so that's very beneficial to your team um even team morale it's thinking about it, if you're a uh, Python programmer and you're being forced, uh, you use force and to learn JavaScript and you don't like it, you don't want to do it, doesn't have the tools you, you, you go bluntly and you don't want to do it. And so it kind of hurts your morale. It does, you don't enjoy that programming, but allowing each programmer to choose their language and work together cohesively on a project is uh, very awesome. I, I think it's very cool that that is an option that we're starting to see. Um, and hopefully this is a continuing path we see in the AV industry. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I, I think not only um, the, do you get to work in the language that you think um, you, you prefer, but if you think about it, it also opens the door to, if I could only do it in this language, it would be so much easier. Or I have these resources, but we're working with this product and it only supports this. And that I think those, I hope that our audience is nodding their head because I think that that's something that I hear a lot about. And and um, it, it really kind of brings AV programming up to modern day, if you will. And I know, you know, we, we throw around that modern programming languages uh, topic a lot, but but it, it really, um, to me, this could be a breakthrough that a lot of people have been waiting for and could open the door to getting more talent or more interest and more um, uh, more um, access to um, knowledge into our industry. I agree. I think that is something that uh, Chris touched upon and we didn't even talk about 
uh, in the last episode, and it got me to really thinking. We we sit here and say, "Hey, we want to get younger people in. We want to get more diverse. We want to uh, branch out and you grow the AV industry." But in AV programming, currently, you either have to know, uh, you have to learn proprietary languages. You're not going to do that in school. You're not going to sit there and go, okay, I'm going to go to high school and take a restaurant or a AMX class. Like they're not going to do that. Um, but they will give Python classes. They will give JavaScript classes because they are broad and used everywhere. Um, so this opens the door into the AV field in grade school, in high school before they get into college because like i said even colleges probably aren't gonna so uh have a oh you gonna learn amx or you're gonna learn pressure on or extron you're gonna have uh basically you're not gonna learn those unless you're on the job and you need to learn them this is something that you can learn in school and then have the skills and experience before you even get on a job site and, and if you think about it too you know not that we want to think about people branching outside the industry that are already in. But if you learn this now, all of a sudden you've, you've added a ton of value to yourself because you're not being stuck at only doing one thing and only learning one language. You're, you're learning something that could be applied in, in different areas. And I don't, it, it seems like there would be a lot bigger community uh, to be able to be a part of and, and, um, have access to, but also feel like, Hey, you know, I, um, I, the AV industry is this great place and I'm, I'm doing something that ha has value. And I'm talking to people that work for a bunch of different companies. I just get to play with fun stuff in, in AV and I'm, but I'm yet I'm writing the same type of code that somebody else is writing at Facebook and Apple and Google and so forth. Um, I actually think that could be a draw for the, even the vice versa. Yeah, like I said, uh, you were saying you, you could take an AV programmer who's knowing these language and say, oh, now I can go work for one of the big tech companies, Facebook, Google, whatever, or vice versa. You could have one of these big tech companies. I mean, if you're a Facebook developer, you're probably only working on one part of the site. It gets a little boring. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, you can go, wait, I can go into the AV industry. And I can actually write code and see my fruit of a labor and do different things. Hey, this is fun. I get to play with some toys instead of, oh, I'm going to look at a screen and all oh, our users are going to click a couple links. Um, I definitely think it can actually draw uh, these outside people into our industry as well. Yeah, I, I like that a lot, actually. And I would, I was, um, I guess, arguing with myself almost in both ways that it could go either direction. But it, but it's nice to know that you know somebody it doesn't feel like I've put all this time in, and and maybe um, um, I can't do anything with what I've learned. I guess is what is um, part of the story. But I agree. Like, but let's get people who know this and bring them in and show them what neat and cool things and and have. Um, be, be able to get that satisfaction that most of us get that are currently in the industry. Um, makes me think about, um, um, George and, and Rich, um, the, the, uh, bald AV guys who we recently had on, on episodes 128 and 129, and they're doing a, a minor at Pace university in AV. Um, but this to me now, it, they can couple what they're teaching with somebody who's teaching programming language. So they could teach what to do with it. And then you could go to um, write the code in your other programming class. So it's kind of neat to be able to, uh, to, to see that connection and, and maybe AV does become something that is um, more, um, more, more gets more attention in, in schools, like you said. Yeah. And another thing I, I see a benefit of having AV go into an open source, open language uh, platform like we're seeing is the thing about right now is when you're using closed languages, you have to use their special 
compiler, your programmer um, software. So you might, it allows you to tailor it a little bit. You get very comfortable with keyboard commands and the colors and all the styles, but then wait, this project now is using a different language. I you got to use another program. Oh, let me configure that one to my liking. Oh, I can't get it just like this other one. Well, opening it to a language, you can go to Visual Studios or you can go to uh, any of the other IDEs and, you know, have your style and be like, this is my look, my feel, my, you know, it's home to me and oh, I can write it in Python or I can write it in JavaScript or whatever. And you're not being like, kind of combine uh, fine into switch switching between programs. Yeah. I I I also like the idea too is now we're we're talking about tapping into libraries too that other people did. So you're 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 you know you 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 just have the ability to uh to 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 go to um some shared site and be able to to get publicly accessed libraries, be able to to feel like you're you, you you're you're working with a full deck of cards rather rather than just what's in your hands, if you will. Yeah. So it, it, it getting into the IT world where IT is like, give me everything, I'll make it work the best. Where AB was, hey, we're going to take everything away from you and just give you the small box and make it work. And you're really limiting what creativity people can do and tools and make things run smoother and easier. So, so um, the, the other thing I wanted to touch on, and then I have a question is that Chris kind of said it um, quietly, but he said, uh, you know, not only no more proprietary, but no more walled gardens. And, uh, and what he was saying, I think is that um, they're, they're opening up the, the H control API so that anybody could talk to it and, that we you, you have that flexibility that people have been after these days, and we we've, we've done several shows on um, open ecosystems, and we've talked about um, interoperability and 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 all all the things that I, I think in uh, twenty twenty three clients need to be able to know that they are can invest in something that gives them options, and that that they'll they'll never be painted into a corner. So I. I um I think that that's a big part of uh, what what Chris was uh, he he was almost undersold in what he said. Uh, he definitely uh, played that down. I agree with you. And like we had Will on twice, who we talked about APIs and the importance of them, and uh, having getting away from the wall gardens and the uh, closed systems. Even though everyone says, "Oh, ecosystem," I understand the importance of an ecosystem could ever since work, but then you are in a closed box and you're limited in your functionality. But if you need to step out, having an open source and open uh, language architecture allows you to go, okay, well, I can get this piece of hardware that can do just what I needed to do. And you saying, go, oh, I got to buy this big box. I only needed to do this one thing, but it, only way I can do it is buying this big box that does everything else. Now you can say, I, hey, I'll get this device from company Y and this device from company Z that does just what you need it to do. And and the, the other thing that I'll touch on along those lines is Chris didn't say it, but I, I know this to be true is that their past library of modules, drivers, and so forth are still going to be supported. So it's um, that that's really uh, I think what's going to make this powerful and that you, you don't have to start over and, and you're um, it, you, you can leverage what you have from the past. It's, it's very, very interesting in that regard. Yes, I agree. And he definitely, I, I think he hit on it. If you were listening, you could yeah. hear it. Um, and then what I really took again, he didn't highlight it, but is, I think we kind of talked about this already, but the whole notion of it's not a, oh, you it's Python, but it's our special flavor of Python. Mm -hmm. Like it's Python. That's it. It's not like, oh, Python with an asterisk or JavaScript with an asterisk. It's whatever you could do for Windows or Linux or any of that stuff in Python, you can do here as well. So 
I think a good way for us to to maybe um, close our commentary on it for, for the time being is what does this mean to, pro, to programmers, developers, our audience? What what um, it sounds like a lot of good things, a lot of opportunity, but I'm sure that some who were uh, who are used to doing things a certain way um, could, could could be getting a little bit n- nervous. Um, so you know what. What, what do you think that this means for the future and how, how does it impact uh, our listeners? So how it impacts our listeners, and I, I take this as two, two approach and not to offend anyone, but I think it gives more power to programmers who are flexible. The ones who are, you know, oh, I've done it this way. I'm This is the way I always want to do it. You can still do that, but you're limiting yourself. Um, I really think this gives the power to folks like the younger generation coming in who are more flexible, who are learning on these open languages and don't want to be like stuck and confined. Um, So I definitely think we have more power. What this also does for the AV industry as a whole is bring us into more... I, I don't I don't I can't think of a better word, but poor IT. Like, you know, I always say A B is IT and we have talked about the conversion also, but this is truly IT. This is IT language. This is IT development. This is IT framework just doing A B instead of network switches or uh software on a computer. It's just a different side of IT. Absolutely. I I I would agree with you. I was thinking about the same thing. If you didn't get to it, I was going to mention that it's very, very IT centric in, in my opinion. And, and I, 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 I think it's pretty exciting. I think, um, I think we've been heading this way for some time. I think that there, there may have been reasons why we haven't gotten here sooner or reasons why we've, we, we've been taking baby steps, let's say, but, but this is very, very interesting and probably the move that, um, that Harmon and AMX needed to make. I'm curious how it's going to be received. And I'm, I'm curious ab- about what the, the outcomes are going to be, because if you think about it, like, like you said, you can, you can now have a team of people working on a project. I mean, it, it, it almost changes the way um, AV programming is done and, and um, we're, we, we can start to lean on a more software software centric approach. Yeah. And this kind of reminds me, and I, I know we talking about AMX and what Chris was talking about in Harmon. Um, and we we're not like floating them. Like this is more of what we see in the industry is like it kind of reminds me of the whole saying of today they'll laugh at you, tomorrow they're gonna ask for your advice. And that's basically like Okay, Harmony and AMX are probably the first ones doing this. Others are going to come out and do it. And at first, they're, you know, they're all, oh, look what the Harmony and AMX are doing. Then they are be like, wait, how can we do this? Um, that's what I'm hoping because I'm looking for, you know, the Trons and the everyone else out there to give us programmer the power that we need to do our job and not and force I- us. I like that. And I think that's a, probably a good way for us to wrap up because when, when I first saw this, I think uh, programmers should be salivating because we, we th- this to me says that w- we really are looking at the value that programmers can bring. And instead of saying that everything is no code, and, and I know that they have a low code solution, it's still modern development and it still shows uh, our talents and and still, um, like we've talked about before, allows you to leverage all your knowledge and your troubleshooting skills and and all the things that you know as an AV person and bring it to this r- really powerful um, uh, arsenal of tools that that you, you we could likely do things um, maybe quicker, easier, uh, better than we we have in the past, which I think really legitimizes our industry. I agree. So, um, l- glad we got a chance to talk about this one, and and you know we 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 certainly don't want anybody to think that we're biased or or this is the only manufacturer we would talk about. We're always we we, we 
provide an open invitation to all manufacturers that would want to be on our show and and uh, talk about their platform and then and how it applies to programmers. So please reach out to us if you'd like to uh, be a part of the conversation. And, and you know, our goal here is really to uh, to to bring to light the um, the programmer's perspective, build community, as we always say, and also just uh, make create awareness about what uh, AB programmers do and and uh, their their uh, skills, challenges, and benefits. So, uh, James, how can people get in touch with you? Um, any last uh, last words, and um, and uh, how could they uh, find out what you're up to? Oh yeah, uh, last words. I, I think you did a pretty good job of this show is not brand fit it's for the programmers it's for our community and yes we're talking about one last episode of this one but we'll take it we'll talk about any of them uh feel free to reach out like steve said and um even listeners if you want to come in and uh talk about one of your products or the program you use and how you use it, talk to us. Let, let's bring you in. Um, that's what we're here for is the programmers in our community. You can get me on the socials, uh, X at uh, AV underscore James King, LinkedIn, um, anything HEPMA. Again, Google me, you'll find me. Excellent. And and um, I agree exactly with what James is saying. And uh, we're, you know, we, we're, we're here for you. So please reach out and, and let us know uh, what you want to learn more about. Submit your questions because we are asked the programmer and, and let us know about uh, if you if you want to be a guest. Uh, for me, you can reach me at Steve Greenblatt, my company Control Concepts at controlconcepts.net. And um, you can find this show on uh, the video version, YouTube and the uh, audio on Apple and Google Podcasts. And uh, we, we welcome uh, your reviews, your feedback, your questions and uh, ratings, reviews, and please share your favorite episode. And we hope that this was one of them. And we look forward to uh, being uh, in front of you in the future. And until then, this has been Ask the Programmer.